everyone, my name is Julia. I'm a customer success agent from Uxpressia. And I'm Veronica, and I'm an event manager here at Uxpressia. Today, we are going to talk about collaborative customer journey mapping. But before we start, I'd like to introduce Uxpressia to those who never heard about our company. Uxpressia is an online platform that helps to build customer journey maps, persona profiles, and impact maps. We also have Uxpressia Academy, an online educational platform with different mapping-related courses, and we love holding events. To check the upcoming events, uh, check out the link in the description box. Today, uh, we are going to talk about synchronous collaboration, but this is not the first time we are talking about it. We already talked about the foundation of any collaborative customer journey mapping activities, which is planning. We also spoke about synchronous collaboration, doing this in the same place at the same time. And we also mentioned the collaboration in the asynchronous mode while building customer journey map. Today, we will go uh, even further and speak about how to collaborate asynchronously after the map is built. So, you built a map. Now what? Uh, you definitely did that not for just, you know, having a pretty picture of your customer journey and putting it aside because you put in, put in a lot of effort. You talk to your customers, to your teammates and to your users. So once your map is built, it's time to turn it into an actionable asset. But before we dive into how we can do that, let's talk about the cases when your journey map is actionable. So your journey map can be actionable in different states. For example, the first one is when the map is incomplete and all the gaps are somehow marked visually and there is an agreement regarding next steps for each of them. So I'll give you an example. For example, you decide to leave the map as is um, as long as some special part of the customer journey is considered to be lower priority now, but you will reconsider it in, let's say, X month. Or you decide to assign a responsible person who will do some research to help fill in the blanks. Another case when your journey map can be actionable is when the map is up to date and there is a process for updating everyone knows about. So this doesn't mean that you need to update a map like every day or after any tiny um, change that was made to your product or your service, but updating it after some major changes in a product or service will definitely make sense because it will be easier to track progress and to see what's on the roadmap. And uh, once your team opens the map, they will be know what's going on. And besides, your updates might be automated with, via some integrations or embeds. And now Julia will show you how you can do that in your expression. Yes, yeah, so at Uxpression, we have a couple of integrations that you might use for your project. And now I'm switching to our platform to show you what it looks like. One of the integrations that you might use for your projects is integration with Jira. To make it work, you can just add Jira issues section to your map and uh, configure the account. So connect your Jira account to your expression. After that, you'll be able to filter your issues by different criteria like issue type, SNE, priority, and status. And you'll be able to attach up to actually unlimited number of issues per stage. And the third case when you map when your journey map can be actionable is when the map itself gives everyone who's written it the idea of the next steps. So besides all the problems and barriers that you were discussing, there's also a list of some ideas, opportunities, or solutions. And the map itself has is some sort of a to-do list telling others what will happen next and who is responsible for that. And now if your journey map checks any of these three boxes, well, congratulations, your journey map is actionable. 
and you can actually use it to improve your UX and CX. And now let's see how you can actually get your team together to turn your map into an asset. Yes, so here you can see three common scenarios, three common things that team usually do after the map is done. First, they ideate and generate ideas based on the map. Then they plan out their activities. And last but definitely not least is they update the map and keep it alive. The last step is frequently dismissed, but if you want to bring quality changes to your customer, user, or employee experience, do not miss out on it. Now, let's uh, walk you through these scenarios one by one and address the challenges that might occur and the ways on how you can collaborate asynchronously within each of these scenarios. So, ideation. Once the map is done, um, the team has to come up with ideas on what to do next. Ideating asynchronously is not the best option, um, usually, because after all, the whole point of ideation is challenging each other on the go, uh, improve the ideas, and ditch the ones that uh, seem to be unfit. However, even though it's not ideal, it still happens. So... Um, Sometimes uh, the team does not have any other option than to collaborate in asynchronous mode. Let's talk about the challenges that you might face on the ideation stage. So the first one is that the team has no idea where to start. And this is the story about the good old fear of the blank page. Especially when working asynchronously, one can ask her themselves, um, how to get started, how to get from zero ideas to at least one or even more. The next challenge is that sometimes it is unclear what is expected from the participants. Because especially working asynchronously, um, you ask your team to generate ideas and it might be unclear uh, what exactly is expected from each participant. How can I, as a participant, personally contribute to the activities? And what kind of ideas you expect to see after everyone's is done? The third challenge is the challenge of hierarchy. Sometimes uh, when generating ideas, you can come across a situation when uh, the ideas of the senior leaders are considered to be more valuable or they are the loudest voices in the room. And that might be really frustrating, but it should definitely not stop you from participating. Another challenge is that people tend to choose the same old patterns. And well, this is quite obvious, right? Because if something worked, why change it? But the whole idea of generating ideas is about looking for fresh uh, solutions to old problems. And if you still have a problem, well, I, I suppose that something is not working properly, right? And the last challenge that we can acknowledge here is that sometimes your team and you take it too seriously. And don't get me wrong, we do not mean that you need to um, treat your ideation sessions somehow differently. We definitely insist on you being um, serious, but don't overkill it. And try not to block your creativity if you create some barriers for yourself and for your teammates. And now Yulia will share the tips on how you can overcome those challenges. Yes, and the first tip would be to start with some warm-up. When starting your ideation process, most of you will come from different contexts. Uh, we we'll already talk about it. Maybe some of you have just had lunch, some of you will ideate the very first thing in the morning, and some of you will have these activities at the very end of their working day. So it makes sense before making people dive right into this uh, ideation process to set up the scene. And yes, it's possible to do even if you're collaborating asynchronously. There are several exercises that you might use uh, in this case. For 
For example, you can ask your colleagues to uh, come up with as many ideas uh, of using some common items like um, spoon, a chair, or a box, as we can see on the slide, in alternative ways. Then just set up the time limit for this exercise, three minutes, for instance, and let others be creative. This exercise uh, encourages divergent thinking and helps to look at common things in a broader way. Another thing to consider here is to do this all in small sub-team sessions. Uh, two, three people will be good. It's easier than ask everyone to connect in the same place at the same time. And also you can ask your colleagues, uh, your team members to uh, record their best ideas to present them after to the rest of the team. At your expression, we uh, suggest using color coding to differentiate different teams' uh, ideas. So I would like to show you how to do that um, in our platform. Right here in the map description section, we, uh, 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 we set up different colors for different teams. So for team one, uh, it will be blue color. Team two will mark the ideas in orange color and team three in purple. So now all we have to do is just to ask the team members to leave their ideas anywhere on the map, but mark them in their color. It will be just easier for everyone else to understand who to go to to ask any questions regarding these ideas. Another way how you can use color coding at your expression is to uh, color these stages or these sections of your map. Uh, for example, you can split your map into like chunks and color the specific stages and then ask your colleagues to work just on the yellow parts, for instance. It's easier than asking them to go through the stage awareness till trial period, but don't add anything to registration, for example. It just simpli simplifies the whole thing. Alternatively, you can take advantage of our uh, views feature. Uh, usually, you, um, customer journey maps are, are pretty big and detailed documents, and it might be quite uh, hard to ideate on these um, big uh, maps. So in this case, it makes sense to split the big map into smaller chunks and assign each team with a part of the map to work on. So let's now uh, create a view for the team one. We will do this just by adding new view here, name it team one, and uh, let's uh, assign just two first stages of the map for them. So I will hide all other stages from this view. You can do the same with sections and also personas. And uh, then, once you save your view, the map will shrink to more compact size, and this will narrow down the focus for your team to these two stages of the map. However, they always can get back to the uh, entire document uh, just by switching to the default view. Next tip here would be to plan more time. So you brainstormed your ideas, now what? You need to discuss them to challenge each other by asking questions, and then someone might want to polish these ideas. And these iterations can go on and on for quite a while. So it makes sense to allocate time and set some deadlines. For example, you can uh, give your team members one to three days to ask questions about the ideas and leave their comments and then one to three days to the authors of the ideas to consider the feedback and refine the ideas based on this feedback. Next tip is to make the rules and make them clear. So rules on how to evaluate uh, ideas should be clear beforehand. For example, uh, you can tell people who will be picking the um, criteria, the ideas, the criteria that they should base uh, their uh, opinions on. For example, it might be the following. If for some ideas the implementation cost will be lower than X, 
we will be able to go ahead and try it. If it will be higher than X, we will try to sell it to the simulators. Or another example here might be, we will uh, prioritize ideas that could bring fast results and uh, the long-term ideas will be a second priority. In your expression, you can actually encourage your team members to <clears throat> express their opinion on the ideas by using reactions. And now I'm uh, switching back to <clears throat> the platform to show you how to use the reactions. To uh, get access to this feature, you need to switch to the commenting mode, reactions tab. And now all you have to do is to uh, ask your colleagues to uh, put a light bulb, for example, next to the ideas they consider impactful. Also, you can identify the gaps in your map by um, using reactions. For instance, ask um, your team to vote with a small, um, uh, with a sad emoji and to place it next to the problems they consider impactful, but they don't know how to solve them, how to deal with them yet. Another tip we can provide you with is bringing in-depth conversation to the table. So we know some facilitators who manage to do some ideation via one-on-ones by discussing with each team member, by meeting with each team member and discussing the ideas uh, and the problems on the map. So just try to look at it this way. So one-on-ones can be ideation sessions too, and they can be even more productive. The next tip that we can give you is to set up framing questions. It is especially difficult in the synchronous collaboration for a facilitator to guide the, the whole team uh, through this uh, ideation um, process. Uh, but it's not impossible. And it might be really helpful and it might be a good idea to announce what kind of ideas are needed right now. So let's say, team, give me your wildest and craziest ideas. Or let's say I need 20 ways to decrease user churn. Uh, setting up specific questions will be really helpful to bring more ideas than some sort of a very broad request. Like, um, let's think about the ways on how we can improve our product or service. And do encourage your team to think because there is a tendency that people generate one or two ideas and they then stop. But trying to push through and, you know, think more about it uh, might bring new results and more fresh ideas. And the last uh, tip that we can provide you with for now is using ideation strategies card. And um, our UXPress team has created such uh, such a deck of idea generating uh, generation strategies card to help others generate quality ideas at their mapping and brainstorming sessions. Uh, what you can do is give each team member a card and to ask them to think about it for uh, a day or for a couple of hours, for example. And make sure to check out the description to find the link. So another use case uh, when working with the map is action planning, which is quite obvious, right? You generated some ideas and now you are making plans on how to you know, implement uh, all that you've generated. So for example, you agree that department A picks up tasks B and it will take, let's say like two weeks to implement. And as usually, this use case also comes with some challenges. So let's talk about them. Uh, the main challenges that we can acknowledge here are that no one wants to pick up the tasks and plan anything. And it might be really difficult to prioritize when there are too many things on the map. And what you should do is just ask yourself, uh, did we pick the right participants? Uh, it might be uh, it might be a surprise for you, but it happens more often than you might um, imagine 
that people are really curious about journey maps and they spend some time building them. But then when they get to the point that they need to take some actions after the map is built, they get really frustrated. And when it happens, there is not really much what you can do, but there are things that you can. So the first thing you can do here is to take it into account and work to prevent it at the very beginning. We actually talked about planning extensively at our first event. So um, check out uh, this event in the link in the top right corner. The next thing uh, to think of is uh, use prioritization frameworks. Obviously not all ideas will make the cut. So you need to prioritize them. We suggest using frameworks, uh, speci uh, special frameworks for that. And some of the popular ones that we like to use are Kanemoto, Rice Scoring, or different matrices. You can also try out impact mapping. So let's overview each of these frameworks and uh, share with you the idea of how, uh, what they're all about. The first uh, framework we want to cover is the Kena model. So the Kena model is a way to assessing the impact of service or product features on customers' satisfaction. The model says that a product or service is much more than just functionality. It's also about customers' emotions. So if you buy a coffee machine, for example, you expect it to make coffee, right? But if it warns you in advance that you're running out of coffee beans, well, you'll be unexpectedly delighted in this case. So following this model, you'll have to assess your features against two criteria, customer satisfaction potential and implementation investment. And then you will see which features fall into each category, like must be, one-dimensional, attractive, indifferent, or reverse. You can see the example on the slide. If you want to learn a little bit more about CAN model, uh, check out the description for some extra links about it. The next framework that might be useful for prioritizing is RICE scoring. RICE stands for R, reach, I, impact, C, confidence, and E, efforts. Using this model, you can make better informed decisions, minimize personal bias in decision making, and justify the choice to the stakeholders. So all you have to do is to calculate the scoring following the equation you can see on the slide, and compare the results of different features or services to pick your priority. You can also check out the description box for more resources on rice, uh, rice scoring. And last but not least here is impact mapping. Um, we won't dive deeper, uh, deep into uh, how to build impact maps. So you can actually check out our impact map video guide by clicking on the top, top right corner pop-up, uh, but we will focus on what it is and how it can be useful. Impact mapping is a collaborative strategic planning technique that helps teams to um, set business goals, break them into the actionable task for further estimation and prioritiz prioritization, and connect deliverables with users or customers' needs. Using the impact map for your project, you can, track, uh, you can trace back to the uh, to the goal uh, and uh, of, of the idea and prioritize your ideas based on it. So to express we have an impact mapping tool. Um, right now, I would like to switch back to our platform to show you. Here you can uh, either create impact map from scratch or use the templates that we have in our templates library. So all you need to do is add the business goal, identify personas, add impacts, and uh, you can do this all in one place. After uh, you uh, come up with the user stories or ideas, you can actually switch to the backlog view and prioritize it and also assign them to different iterations. 
And the last scenario for today is updating the map and keeping it alive. And it's not a secret, but customer journey maps bring the most value when they are regularly updated and continuously worked on. So in this scenario, most of the teams really work asynchronously and they just go back and forth to and adding some details. So the key thing here is rather simple. If you decide uh, and agree on when and how uh, we are planning to update the map, uh, the probability that the map won't be abandoned is much higher. So, but as usually this, uh, this scenario comes with the challenges, so let's start with that. So the first challenge that we can acknowledge here is that there is no agreement on how often to update it. And you just heard me saying that it is necessary to uh, agree on when and how we're going to update the map. Wow, that's great, but it is quite often that this step is forgotten when planning some collaborative sessions. So if there is also no agreement on who it's going to be to update it, so you're in trouble. Uh, and the other challenge that we can acknowledge here is that people feel lost when looking at the map in three months' time. And this is what falling out of context does to you. Because uh, when team members look at the map uh, in a while, uh, there is that feeling that, you know, you see the, the map for the first time. Uh, so what can you do to, to avoid it? Um, first thing you can do is you can set an intention for the next review as a last step of your collaboration. Make sure to uh, create an agreement as uh, this last step of a collaborating process. It will be less and we are done here and more, okay, let's get back to our map um, in the last week of November, for example. To take it a step further, it makes sense to tie the review to some date or make it a regular thing. For example, you can agree that you will come back to the map once you launch your new gym subscription system, or uh, once you conduct a new research study, or just agree to make this review every three months. And the next tip here uh, is to write down questions to yourself. So when your map is still fresh in your mind and you plan to update it in three months, for example, it makes sense to write the questions like, what do you want to think about or to come back to in three months? Or what results you expect to have? What decisions are on hold till then or depend on these results? The more specific you are with those questions, the easier it will be for you to get up to speed and continue. At your expression, we uh, have um, commenting mode where you can leave these questions and to get back to them after. So to access the commenting mode, you just click comments and you'll be able to pin your comment anywhere on the map, leaving those questions. You can also encourage your team members to leave their questions here as well, creating threads this way. And that's it what we wanted to share with you today. So let's sum it up. So today we've talked about three things to do with the map once it's finished. And it's ideating and generating ideas, planning out the activities, and keep updating your map and keeping it alive. We've also talked about the challenges teams face and provided you with some tips to overcome the, the challenges. And we've highlighted some UX pressure features to make your asynchronous collaboration smoother. Once you're done with your collaboration, there is just one thing left, to present your map to your team, stakeholders, or your clients. But that's another story. Whatever questions you might have, feel free to drop them below, and we will be definitely answering them. With that, thank you for your attention, See you at our next events. If you want to see more events like this, make sure to check the upcoming ones at expression.eventbrite.com or check the recordings we've got on this channel. Take care, and I will see you around.